Some 35 years ago, on March 31, 1990, I took the grand stage and proclaimed victory in one of the qualifying rounds of the original Nintendo World Championships. This isn't actually me up here, but the scene was very much the same. My high score and gameplay was on the big screen, showing everyone in attendance my awesome come-from-behind victory, thanks to a very lucky last-minute surge in Tetris. It was the absolute greatest day of my young life, at least until I got to touch some boobs. And it confirmed what I always knew. I was destined to be a Nintendo World Champion. Everybody who won a qualifying round was invited back to the championship round the next day, much like in dozens of other cities across America. The winners from each city would meet up to crown the one true champion. I was geared up for the opening round, practicing the three games in the challenge for hours, get 50 coins in Super Mario Bros., finish a race in Rad Racer, and run out the clock on Tetris. Thankfully, I had all three games. The next day, April 1st, 1990, I grabbed that NES controller, said, let's rock, and I was on my way. I had a huge score compared to everyone around me, including the kid next to me. I say kid, but he could have been 17 years old and was huge, kind of like Mo from Calvin and Hobbes. He was not dealt a good hand on Tetris. After a few bad blocks, this giant moron threw a fit and kicked the cabinet. All of the control decks connected to this station immediately began flashing off and on. It was the one fatal flaw of the NES. My score, which was over 800,000, was gone. I was eliminated, and my hopes of becoming the Nintendo World Champion flushed down the drain. It was the very worst day in my young life. At least until I got my first paycheck and saw how much was taken out in taxes. Though crestfallen, I still look back on those days with fondness. 1990 was the apex of Nintendo. The NES had complete dominance of the home game market. Basically, a monopoly. There were dozens of amazing games, and the new Super Mario Bros. 3 led the way. And it wouldn't be long until we'd be lured away with cool slogans like Genesis does. Even if you stayed on the Nintendo reservation, it was no longer a one-man show. The NES would soon be history, replaced with other options. Things would never be the same. So I suppose it's fitting that Nintendo Mania, which ran from about 1987 to 1990, ended with the World Championships, a worthy capstone. Time marched on, and in the 21st century, Nintendo paid homage to its past and brought back the concept of the Nintendo World Championships in 2013, and once again in 2024. These two games, Famicom Remix and World Championships, offer up the fun of that original three-game challenge in different ways. I've wanted to revisit Famicom Remix for a while now, especially to express my frustrations that Remix was one of a small number of Wii U games that were not brought over to the Switch. So, no time like the present. In Japan, the game is essentially the same, though some of the items in the Deluxe Edition are different. As well, NWC24 and Remix are not the same game, but on the surface, they look very similar. Let's take a look at each game, compare and contrast, then you can decide if Nintendo World Championships 2024 is a worthy addition to your home gaming library. 2013 was a great year to be a Nintendo fan. The Wii U, with its unique second screen, made for some amazing games. The thing certainly wasn't flying off the shelves, but the tiny user base made it feel like you were part of an underground club. Special events like the Year of Luigi let longtime fans know that the Big N still cared about them. I contend that the Wii U era was the greatest time in the history of gaming, at least this side of the millennium. To celebrate 30 years of the family computer, Nintendo quietly released a small eShop game, Famicom Remix, known elsewhere as NES Remix, in December of 2013. For anyone who grew up on 8 bits, it was an automatic, no-brainer, must-buy. Remix offered up 16 games from the early days of the family computer and NES. Each game was broken down into small scenarios with clear goals that must be finished in a very short time. Maybe this type of play was never expressly thought of back in the 80s, but for many of us, years and years of playing the same games over and over for eternity let us notice a few things. Places where you could get infinite one-ups, or an invincibility run where we can clear every enemy, if you know the right pattern. 
Things like reach the flagpole in Super Mario Bros., rescue Pauline in Donkey Kong, or clear the screen of enemies in Zelda were the foundation of Remix. While those things seem very easy, there was also a running timer that recorded how fast you could complete everything. Certain clear times rewarded you with stars that unlocked more and more games and challenges. Three stars were given for the best time, but a perfect time, finishing as fast as humanly possible, gave you the three rainbow stars. Collecting stars also unlocked stamps for use in Miiverse messages, something seen in many Wii U games. Each of the 16 games in Remix were presented as authentic as possible, like playing on an original family computer or NES. Graphical glitches, slowdown, and other bugs that were found in the original games were retained. Even the resolution of the games isn't the sharp and clear pixels you see in your favorite emulator. Things are intentionally a little fuzzy to recreate those 525 lines of RF signal on a good old analog tube TV. With enough stars, remixed stages can be unlocked. These mashed everything up. Link in Donkey Kong? Playing golf in a typhoon? Weird Shadow Super Mario Brothers? I don't even know what you call this. It was great. Old favorites were given new life. And I don't know where else to say this, but I love gradient backgrounds. Nintendo followed up with Remix 2 a few months later, in April 2014, this time featuring only 12 games, lesser known titles like Kid Icarus, my personal favorite, and later releases like Wario's Woods were included. Don't forget Super Mario Bros. 2 and 3. Again, a long list of challenges were included that kept the fun going late into the night. Even more remixed stages turned the best of the 8-bit days under Sideways Down. To celebrate the year of Luigi, a special mode was added. Super Luigi Brothers. Keeping with the remix theme, the bonus game is a backwards running Super Mario Brothers with the lost levels high jumping Luigi. Very fun and more challenging than you'd expect. Furthermore, a reworked version of the Nintendo World Championships was included. Get 50 coins in Mario 1, 25 coins in Mario 3, and play Dr. Mario to the end with the entire challenge running for six minutes and 21 seconds, the exact runtime as it was in 1990. Your best times were added to an online leaderboard that showed the best scores of that day. Remix 2 was sold on its own in the eShop, while a retail package of Remix 1 and 2 was released alongside it. Many, but not all, of the challenges came to the 3DS with Famicom Remix Best Choice. In Japan, the game sold roughly 30,000 copies in each format, making these games a rare and expensive find today. If you still held on to your copy, all of the high scoreboards and other online fun were no longer available. Everyone had moved on to the Switch, and with game after game after game after game after game from the Wii U days getting a Switch version, I always had faith that Remix would someday rise from the grooveyard of forgotten favorites. Well, that never happened. Or did it? Is the Nintendo World Championships a remix reborn? Debuting on July 18th, 2024, the Nintendo World Championships can be downloaded through the Nintendo eShop, as well as in a special edition that was announced some months before. If you were lucky enough to pre-order one of these, some goodies were included, for a price. The NES version, released outside of Japan, includes a replica gold cartridge, somewhat similar to the ones awarded to the winners of the 1990 championships. In Japan, the event from 1990 is a footnote to a footnote. Promotional campaigns say as much, ignoring the original competition and focusing on the challenges in the game, hosted by none other than Arino Kacho the host of Game Center CX, the original game challenge show, and the only person I would ever concede to being better at video games than me. Okay, Takahashi Meijin 2. This campaign is running concurrently with the Family Computer 40th Anniversary Celebration. That campaign features Kobayashi-san, who works in a used game store, telling stories about the glory days of the 1980s and playing old favorites with friends. It's a very cool idea. Having a series of YouTube videos with a bunch of old guys hanging out in a used game store, talking about games. I've never seen that before. I can see why it's popular. 
In Japan, the gold cartridge makes little sense and is replaced with two working family computer wireless switch controllers. The same ones offered to Nintendo Switch Online subscribers and are the equivalent to the gray NES controllers sold elsewhere. Do the microphones work? Well, what do you think? Postcards are included that feature the cover art of all 13 games in NWC. A set of five pins are also in the box. Pins are an award system in the game, so it's nice to have a tangible pin to go along with it. The Japanese Special Edition is actually a good value. The whole set costs 9,800 yen. You save about 600 yen and get the swag too. The 13 games are the four Super Mario Bros. games, Zelda 1 and 2, Metroid, Kid Icarus, Excite Bike, Ice Climber, Balloon Fight, and Kirby's Adventure. The game is divided into several modes of play. Speed Run is the closest in style to Remix, and honestly, some of the challenges are exactly the same. Take the sword in Zelda 1, defeat Meta Knight in Kirby, get the Maru in Metroid. It seems too easy, but hey, let's remember, not everyone is 48 years old and has played these games 100 trillion times since the day they came out. So it's a good way to introduce the 8-bit games to newcomers. Each challenge starts with an explanation of the goal, as well as a sample video of how to do that. The on-screen action is confined to a center square in a pixel-perfect ratio. The remaining space is filled up with a running timer and some other information. Your profile is displayed on the right side. You can customize this with an icon and a hype tag about yourself. You can also list your favorite NES or FC game, which goes beyond just the 13 in this set. If you want to say that Galaxy 500 is your favorite game, you can! Oh, no wait, Galaxy 500 was a band. Personal best times are on the left, along with a controller that shows which buttons are being used at the time. Finish the challenge under a certain time to get a ranking. Most of these will be A, right from the start. S is a perfect ranking. If you get C, you must be doing something wrong. If things go awry, like losing a life, the game rewinds and sends you back to where you were, giving you a do-over. If you can earn an A rank on a challenge, you'll be rewarded with a pin, featuring artwork related to that game. Pins can be shown to others in your profile and while playing. You also earn coins that unlock later challenges. Coins can also be earned by beating personal best times or playing the World Championships mode. Every challenge has a clever name too, a step up from Remix, which were just numbered in order. Challenges are based on difficulty from one star for normal to five of them for legendary. While many of the 150 challenges in the game are short and easy, the legendary challenges are the longest and often involve the entire game, such as finishing Super Mario Bros. in under 10 minutes. All of them save replays of your best time, so you can watch them again. In World Championships mode, players compete in a weekly set of five challenges, then have their scores ranked on a global leaderboard. You must have a Switch Online membership to access this mode, but it's very likely you already do. If not, you better sign up. It might be the biggest disconnect in NWC24, because there really is nothing like the 1990 tournament in the game. But since the challenges are randomized and swapped out, it keeps things much more interesting than a three-game challenge set in stone until the end of eternity. Also, thankfully, there isn't a lifetime high scoreboard where once the fastest route is mastered, all you see is the top 100, all with the exact same times. Survival mode features online multiplayer, sort of. You can play against seven others, though it's not a live game. You're going head-to-head -head against a replay of others' best times. Your gameplay will also be uploaded and used in online matches. This is actually a very clever thing and will truly future-proof the game. If you live in a far-off corner of the world and work overnights, then maybe the game won't be so active wherever you are online. But since these are just replays and not live players, it makes it feel like the game is more active than it actually is. As for the challenges, you start with eight players. The best four move on after one round, then two. The winner gets a lot of coins. Party mode is similar to survival mode. Offline play for up to eight people. Can the Switch connect that many controllers? I guess so. You can choose challenges individually or through packs. These vary by difficulty and contain five challenges. Rather than elimination, points are awarded based on how well you do. And whoever has the most points at the end wins. 
So, let's go to the rating. First, to go back to Remix, if you caught my review on the old channel way back when, you'll remember that I gave Remix 1 a score of B on the patented GTV rating meter. It was fun, but a little short, though very creative and worth the money. Remix 2 was rated A. More of the same fun, only bigger. It was great to go all the way to 1994 and cover the entire family computer lifespan. Super Luigi Brothers was fantastic, and the World Championships was an unexpected, fun addition. Best Choice also received an A. Basically, the title is accurate, taking the best parts of Remix 1 and 2 on the go. The Retail Famicom Remix 1 and 2 earned a G. The first G since 3D.Game Heroes in 2010. Everything together on one disc. That is pure G-tier entertainment. For Nintendo World Championships on the Switch, here's the breakdown. Pros. Easy to get into. The beginner won't be put off by starting out with simple challenges. Things need very little explanation, but if you need it, it's spelled out clearly. Varied challenges. Sure, the one-star, three-second challenges aren't much, but these five-star ones are really going to take a long time to master, and it will be fun to see how you stack up against others while trying to figure out how to move up from C to B to A to S. Extended Online Life Well, possibly. The survival mode where you play online isn't true online, but that ensures you'll never be stuck in an empty lobby playing nobody. Rotating the challenges in World Championship mode also keeps things interesting. It's hard to know how much online activity the game will see in, say, 2028, but these touches will keep people coming back. Lots of goodies and fan service. Of course the extra challenges, but all those pins and icons will be fun to get and show off, especially the ones that cost thousands of coins. All the creative hype tags and challenge names took extra work that I appreciate. Cons. The game remains the same. Some of the challenges are exactly as the same ones in Remix. The overall total is less than in Remix as well. The artwork and theme are very American. All of the elements and fonts come from the NES side of the world. It makes the Japanese game feel a little out of place. A red, white, and gold theme would have been really cool. Not to mention that nobody in the Land of the Rising Sun cared about the original World Championships at all. The big one. That, very simply, Nintendo has not re-released Remix. My final grade for Nintendo World Championships on the Switch, using the patented GTV rating meter, is... B. It's a fine game and does what it does well. But when you look back at Remix, these challenges don't break any new ground. On the other side of the coin, these online modes were not possible on the Wii U or 3DS. So as far as the competition angle goes, it's a great improvement. All in all, I do enjoy NWC 24 on the Switch very much, and I think I will for quite some time. Now I can finally pick up where I left off in 1990, when I was unfairly robbed of the crown. Will I reach the top and live the glory once and for all? As a wise man once said, the struggle is the success.